phases and the phases in Valkan Sierra by Germany, where he showed us that those phases led to synchronizing in the cardiovascular rhythms. And what are these phases? They're basically modulations that occur in expressive music features, such as loudness or tempo, and they are what speaks to the listener and what makes them react. So from that, the idea of the paper came to be of how we would be able to find proof of this um, synchronization and this entrainment between the music and the uh, physiological signals that we recorded. The one thing we did is that we looked at music not as a single stimulus, we looked at it as a group of stimuli. And for this paper specifically, uh, we looked at the loudness. So the question kind of came to be of if these phrases are having an effect on the body, how can we measure it and how can we measure this measurement automatically or computationally? And the data from the study, the microphone study, uh, had nine participants that um, have their ECG continuous blood pressure and respiration reported while they were listening to a playlist composed of nine different pieces played on a reproducing piano. So music was a controlled variable for our study. And specifically the data we analyzed in this paper, it was 20 participants that listened to Propagate playing Propagate Scalpite, and their respiration and RRM variables were recorded while they were listening to this track. So I mentioned phrases. What a phrase is, again, variations in expressive music features. And normally this, is, this type of like um, boundary or phrase annotation is done, done manually, which can be quite time consuming. So what we did is we used a Bayesian-based algorithm that uh, takes priors that we give it for this track, for example, and it gives us the probability of there being a boundary. So you see the red, very strictly line, that's the loudness of the track. And then at the bottom of the graph, if you can see it, is a solid blue line, and the solid blue line represents the probability of there being a boundary at that specific, uh, specific beat index of the track. And peaks in that solid blue line are where the algorithm determined there to be a high probability of a phrase ending and another one beginning. And also just to help with visualizing, I also mark them out like with those arcs. And I'm going to play you a snippet of Gavote just to kind of give you an idea of what to listen for or what the phrase is. Um, and that's the producing piano. And there's a pause here. So that would be a phrase where all of a sudden there was either a stop or a big shift in the overall theme of the music. And we had these phrases, so the data from the algorithm, but then we also had the physiological data, so how do we compare them? Well, I looked at comparing the curves themselves, so I did the envelopes of the respiration and the RRM verbals that were derived from the ECG signal. And the method I used at Brunel is earth move resistance, which you can see an exemplification of it on the top left. Um, and it calculates the minimum cost of making one distribution, transforming it into another one. And that cost, the smaller it is, it means the more similar the curves were, which in our case, it would imply more synchronization between the two. And the thing is, we also wanted to test the efficiency of the Bayesian algorithm. So besides the loudness credence boundaries, so those probability values from the algorithm, we also computed every, all uh, distances with the envelope of the loudness itself just to compare the results. And then to further test the validity of whatever we obtained with this original data, we did surrogate data analysis. So the logic for this was that every person reacts differently to everything. And everybody has like their own unique behavioral or response pattern to a stimulus. And because of that, we wanted to have the participants' data during the track and compare it with 
they're only considering other tracks so that we would be able to say, well, their response during the music was different than their response during other tracks or whilst not listening. And that would give us a good comparison for whether or not their signals were actually synchronizing due to what they were being listening to. And we did the, everything but the bass line, which is in green, and the track analyzed, which I put that track line in this case. And then everything is pre-processed and analyzed and put together from casting into a bigger variable from which um, segments are then randomly chosen to be of the same length as the track or animals. So now that we have this, all of these signals, we have the results and the, basically in these graphs, you can see in red, uh, the red line that is the original value, so when we actually computed with our data, and then in blue you have the surrogate data, which is shown as a confidence interval, and the, this is, um, then those values are then represented in the tables, and in the tables you have the binomial probability distribution, of obtaining these results. So basically, we have those 20 participants we talked about, and those are our numbers of tests. And then a positive scenario would be whenever the red of the diamond thing was below the blue, because that shows that the difference between the curves during music listening is smaller than during surrogate data. So the signals were closer in shape or more similar in shape during music listening. So we want the red thing to be below the blue thing. And those are the probability distribution values. And on the left side, you have the results when looking at the comparison between the patient output and output. And on the right, you have it for the loudness envelope. You can see for the loudness envelope, there's no statistical significance, so that's not good. But for the patient algorithm, we did have a statistical significance. And then to further kind of test, we also did, I don't know if you can, you can see it on the small thing there at the top, in pink it, or red is the, the number show the pair t test value for these results. And for the loudness credence, and specifically just like with the binomial distribution, for the RR interval, so the graph on top left, you, we have statistical significance and further kind of corroborating our idea that during music listening there is synchronizing is the fact that the t-test value is negative, which shows that overall the average of the results when comparing the original data with the surrogate data shows that the original is smaller. So smaller difference means more similar, which is good for our case. And to kind of conclude, and kind of remind you why we did all of this, is that we wanted to show that there is synchrony between physiological signals and music, and we have specifically the Palavas in our case. Uh, furthermore, with the results, we show that the Bayesian algorithm is able to achieve statistical significance, and both of these things were integrated into the pipeline we made in order to create this automated measurement of this synchronicity or entrainment, which shows further that we can use music as a way of helping people with cardiovascular disease if their signals start responding to the music. We do acknowledge the limitations of the study, so we had a small sample size. However, because everything is automated, uh, the next step will be running this analysis on all of those 92 participants and all the tracks that they listen to. And those are the graphics in my views. And these are the links to the COSMOS, which is the ERC project, and Heart of Ben, which is the study. And I would like to thank my